Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I'm the niche fragrance collector. I love niche perfumery, but I also love any form of storytelling, whether it be a novel or film or anything of that nature. There's one, I guess, plot type called the hero's journey. It's very popular. I mean, once you understand what the hero's journey is, what its arc is, you'll see it everywhere in movies. The core of it is that the individual in the movie is not restricted by their situation, their circumstances, or the, their lot in life. That they take something, sometimes they go on a journey, whether it be physical or whether it be emotional, but they, they take something, they learn, and they become victorious in the end over whatever it is that was oppressing them or holding them back or whatever it may be. I think the reason why we love these kinds of stories is because we transplant ourselves in the that, that hero, that individual. We may look at our own lives and go, you know, I dream for more, I, I dream for bigger. And so we like seeing these, these stories of victory. I love that this story narrative isn't restrictive just to books and film, but it can also be translated into perfume. The perfumer is Mel Frischuni. When he started his perfume journey, he commenced with three fragrances. All three fragrances have the same leading title, Nota di Viaggio, but then their subtitles vary from fragrance to fragrance. The very first one is a tribute to Istanbul and his memories of that location, and it's called Rite de Passage. The second one is called Shukran, and it's his memories of being in Morocco. The third one is a tribute to Sicily, and it's called Chiavuru di Amori, which is perfume of love. And it's on the third one that I want to begin. Now, it's interesting that I've flipped things over in that rather than telling the story from the very first one, the Rite de Passage, I actually want to start with the last one. So I'm telling the story in reverse because it's actually the story as it happens for him chronologically. If you haven't had a chance to look at an interview that I did with Mel, have a look here. I had an opportunity to travel to Salso Maggiore Terme, where his atelier is. I had an opportunity to spend quite a bit of time with Mel and really, um, I guess, get to know the man, but also the perfumer. The key point is that he wasn't born thinking, I'm going to be a perfumer. If anything, he recognized that he had a, um, a feeling for herbs, for smells, and he became a chemist. But it was a little bit of a soulless job. It wasn't something that was driving him creatively. And Istanbul, so that very first fragrance, is the birth of Mel Fashuni, the perfumer. So I want to start, I guess, at the beginning, a young Giuseppe, young Mel, with dreams. Nota di viaggio, number three, Chavuro di Amori. The perfume opens with this wonderful fruit, floral component to it. For me, when I first sprayed this, it was instantly this cloud of floral, ylang ylang. There was a note in there, I couldn't quite pick it. I could, I could sense that ylang ylang, I could sense that, that bouquet of floral in there. There is a very gentle whisper of jasmine that comes through, but there's another note. I'm like, what is that? On opening, you're getting a fig leaf with bergamot and artemisia. In the heart is jasmine and ylang ylang. In the base, frankincense, cedarwood, benzoin, powder, and sandalwood. Mel Fashuni's fragrances is about the composition, not about the notes. Sometimes I've, I've read some comments where people try to sort of define it really quickly and they say it's a fig fragrance. This is not a fig fragrance. I have, I love fig as a fragrance note. I have a number of fig fragrances in my collection. But as I, as I mentioned earlier, I detected that floral composition, that ylang ylang with a slight jasmine, but there was something else coming through. And that something else is that fig leaf. I remember when I, when I smelt it, I'm like, this is not fig. This is not a fig that I know. I'm fortunate to have a fig tree that is native to Calabria. And I went into my backyard. Give me one second. I bought a fig leaf with me. And I sprayed the fragrance. Chavuro di Amori. And then I smelt the, the actual, at the moment it's not fruiting, but I took, I find that, I always find that the sap from the tree is very close to the actual fruit itself. And so I can smell it there. So the, the sap itself has a quite fruit-like quality to it. And I'm like, that's not the fragrance. 
but then when I ripped the actual leaf, the leaf has a green fruit, but not fruity fig component to it, which is very reminiscent of this fragrance. In that opening, the jasmine, the ylang ylang are playing in amongst that fig note there. As it dries down, it moves into this incense-like quality, woody notes, but it never loses that floral energy and also that fruit component from the actual fig itself. The one thing that I enjoy with male Fashuni fragrances, and, and this is the part where there's a balancing act. You buy a perfume because it smells great and you enjoy the, the fragrance because it, it transmits your personality, other people can uh, enjoy it, the sillage of it, things of that nature. However, the other side of the story when it comes to male's fragrances is the poetry, the olfactory poetry that's connected to these fragrances. And for me, both of them is an equal part. So it's not just the perfume that smells great, which it is, it's also the storytelling that goes behind it, the memories that are connected to that particular fragrance. For me, this fragrance is an olfactory journey. It reminds me and I don't know whether it's a real memory or whether it's an imagined moment. I had an opportunity to travel to Sicily and when I smell this fragrance, it's the feeling of sitting up against a stone wall, the warmth of the stone, the landscape before me is orchard with fig. I can smell the fig. I can, I can sense the heat emanating from that fig tree. And then also the feeling and the smell of a loved one next to me. These were all, when I smell this fragrance, these are all the imagery that is associated to it. I love that when I started to do the research for this particular fragrance, I came across this one comment, which is part of the notes that Mayo includes with all the fragrances. The mother's clothes smell of jasmine, their hands caress rosaries. I remember those late summer afternoons when in a hurry we came home from the sea Boys and girls, we collected figs from the ruined walls that overlooked the street. We ran to the feast. The great doors of the churches opened their secrets, their scents. I remember those summer evenings when, tired, I slept in the arms of my mother. My hands still smelled of figs, but my love supervised me among the white garments, among the incense that enveloped her. As I mentioned earlier in that interview that I had with Mel, as he creates each fragrance, he journals his thoughts, he journals his emotions. He has compendiums or books for each of the fragrances that he creates. And I love that the real memories that were created because of the fragrance somehow instilled in me similar elements. The stone wall, the loved one, obviously the fig, the smell of the fig, but also the earth. These are all components that I feel when I partake of this particular fragrance. There is an incense note in here with that frankincense, but it is, I was gonna say, but it's almost undiscernible, but it's not because I can, I can detect it, but it's, it's not prevalent. It doesn't become an incense-like fragrance. It continues to retain the elements of the florals, the ylang ylang, the fig from the very beginning, and also the woods that are then also in the base. But all of these notes, all of these, this composition is all playing together. If I were to define the fragrance quickly, it's a fruit floral that migrates to a floral. And finally, it's a floral woody incense style fragrance, but it does have a fruit note. It does have that fruit component throughout the fragrance. It has awesome longevity. I get, without exaggeration, eight to nine hours, but the truth is I'm getting 12 plus. I wake up in the morning and I'm smelling Nota di Viaggio, still on me. I was gonna say, I'm still smelling Chiavuro di Amore, which is really the name of the fragrance. I'm still smelling that, that perfume of love on me. It almost, I mean, there is no musk in it, but it blends with me, blends in with my own scent profile, especially overnight. So as you're sleeping, your own musks are emanating. So in the morning, there is a sweetness to me to the point where I'm like, man, I smell good. <laughs> I'm smelling nice because it's subtle. It's not the perfume. Sometimes I do wake up. There are fragrances that are still very prevalent when I wake up in the morning, but I can detect that it's that fragrance. Whereas here, it is chavuru di amori. It's, it's that perfume of love that is on me that is, uh, it's almost a part of me. I find that the fragrance has very strong, to say that it has a full sillage would, to, would be to misunderstand that this is not a fragrance that has 
uh, that commands a room. So it's not that kind of fragrance. However, it has a full sillage. People can detect this fragrance on me. I find that it does go down to a moderate, probably after the six to seven hours, but it is very detectable. On my skin, this fragrance really pushes out on me. As I mentioned earlier, there's an olfactory energy in there that makes you dream of other things. It just conjures up other emotions. I love the hero's journey with these fragrances. As I said, for him, his story begins when his new life emerged as a perfumer and ends in that trilogy, in that Nota di Viaggio, with remembering himself as a young boy living in Sicily who had a dream, the dream of becoming something else. I do love the Mel Fashuni fragrances. I feel that they're quite unique. They are olfactory journeys. They are olfactory memories that you partake in. It is just a perfume. So understand that you're buying this because you enjoy the scent profile that it has. When I first sprayed this, it was instant love for me. The components in here are all things that I love. That ylang ylang, that uh, indolic nature of the jasmine, then it's woody nature as it begins to dry down, slight incense, and that, and that very clever fig note that's in there. It's not fig-like, but there is a fig component to it that just makes you dream of a landscape, that makes you see this landscape before you. It's an incredible perfume, one that you really need to experience. Put it on your skin, see how it feels for you, what kind of energy does it transmit, what kind of memories does it create, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you guys all on the next episode. Hey.